Okay, so in this video, I'm going to look at some multiple choice questions of physics. So these are higher paper one, physics from paper one, time zone one, May 2019. So the first question says, a student is verifying the equation. It says x is equal to two lambda y divided by z. It says percentage uncertainties are, and then it's got different ones in quantities there. So, and then it wants to know what the percentage uncertainty in x is. So if we look at this equation here, we can see that x is equal to 2 times lambda times y divided by z. So whenever you have multiplication or division, what you need to do is add to the uncertainty, uh, percentage uncertainties in each quantity. So percentage uncertainty in 2 would be nothing. In lambda, it's 10%. Then in y, it's 0.05%. And then in z, it's 5 so essentially, we're doing a division here of y and z. So we would add the percentage uncertainties of 10 and 5. This lambda, or so the y here has percentage error of 0 0.05. That's very small compared with the 5 or the 10. So we can effectively ignore that and just add the 10 and the 5 together, which would make 15. So the correct answer would be B. OK, moving on to question two. So the student models the relationship between the pressure P of a gas, its temperature T, as P is equal to X plus YT. The units of P are the Pascal and the units of T are the Kelvin. Well, what are the fundamental SI units of X and Y? So we need to look here. So we've got this P. So we know that this is in Pascals. Then we've got add X and then Y times T. So because this is in Pascals, we're going to add these two quantities together. The quantity of this one would need to be Pascals, and yt would also need to be Pascals. So we could work out what the fundamental SI unit of the Pascal was and then use that to help us. But if we just have a quick look down the list of options here, we can save ourselves some time. So Pascals is clearly not temperature, so it must be this one, kilograms, meters, minus one, seconds, minus two, as those are both the same. So that would be the unit of the Pascal, so it's going to be A or B. And then y would need to be that, but then divided by Kelvin, because when we times by Kelvin here, we'd again have to get Pascals. So this one would be the Pascal, and then divided by Kelvin would be this one. So the answer would be A. OK, next question. Question three says, a skydiver is falling at terminal speed when she opens her parachute. What are the direction of her velocity vector and the direction of her acceleration vector before she reaches the new terminal speed? OK, so to explain this one, if I just draw a little bit of a diagram here. So here's our skydiver. So they're going to be having a force of gravity here, or their weight mg. And then because they're traveling at terminal velocity, there's going to be an equal force here, which is going to be the resistance force, or should I write that as R. So this is when they're traveling at terminal velocity. The weight here and the resistive force from the air, those are going to be equal. The acceleration is going to be zero. OK, and then V is max. OK, that's the terminal velocity. Now, when she opens her parachute, and what direction of her velocity vector and the direction of her acceleration vector before she reaches a new terminal velocity? So as she opens the parachute, her weight is still going to be exactly the same as it was before, mg. However, because we've now got a large parachute here, there's going to be a much greater air resistance than there was before. Um, so this R here is going to be much, much greater than it was before. So you should be able to see here that now there's going to be an acceleration upwards because this resistive force is much, much greater than the mg. However, while this happens, she's still traveling downwards, so the velocity is still downwards in both cases. So here, velocity will be large. Here, the velocity will be a bit smaller, but will still be downwards. So in both cases, the velocity vector is downwards, and the direction of the acceleration vector would be upwards in the second case. So the answer should be C. OK, moving on to question four. So the sports car is accelerated from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in three seconds. What is the acceleration of the car? So we need to know that acceleration is the change in velocity. So V minus U and divided by T. So we can see here it's accelerated from 0 to 100. So V is 100, U is 0, and then T is 3. 
However, we need to be careful here because this V is in kilometers per hour. And what we need to do is change that into meters per second. So to change from kilometers per hour to meters per second, we're going to need to do 100. And then to change it into meters, we would times it by 1,000. And then to change it into seconds, we would need to divide by 3,600, 60 times 60. So if I just get my calculator out, we can do that. So 100 times 1,000 divided by 3,600 gives me 27.7. 27.8. OK, so then because our u is 0, our change in velocity will be 27.8. And then we divide that by 3. So a is 9.8. 25 or 9.26. Now, if we look at our potential answers here, we can see they're all in terms of g. So if I then divide that by g, which is 9.81, I can see I basically get 0 0.9. So the answer should be 0 0.9 g, which is c. OK. Moving on to question five, it says a girl throws an object horizontally at time t is equal to zero. Air resistance can be ignored. At t is equal to 0 0.5 seconds, the object travels horizontally a distance x in meters while it falls vertically through a distance y in meters. What's the initial velocity of the object and the vertical resistance fallen at t is one? Okay, so if we just sketch a little diagram here. So we're gonna have our ball here like this, and uh, we need to work out our initial velocity like that. And then uh, we want to work out the virtual velocity. So hold on. We want to know that, and then we want to know how far it falls. So it's going to follow a parabolic path like that. And then at some later time here, this is t is equal to 1 half. We know that it's traveled x this way, and it's traveled y that way. Now, what we should know is that the horizontal velocity is constant, because there's no forces acting horizontally. Every half a second, it should continue to go x. So if I was to draw it a bit later on, down here, it's not quite on the same trajectory as I drew earlier, but that distance there should also be x, and then this will be t is equal to 1. Okay, and then this distance here will be more. Let's call that z for now. Okay, so it should have gone an additional distance x because the horizontal velocity will always be the same. So in one second, it would have traveled x and then x again. So in one second, it will be 2x. So for our initial velocity in meters per second, it must be 2x. So it can be either C or D. Then we could probably just work out what the answer was from here. Since we know it's going to accelerate downwards, it can't possibly be Y again, because it's going to have to travel further. So that would suggest it's going to be D, which is 4Y. So we can assume that the answer there is D. If you actually want to work out how far it's going to travel, you could do um, S is equal to UT plus a half a t squared for vertically. OK, and then you would see that you've got a square here and it would end up being 4y. But you can see that because it can't be the same distance here. It's got to accelerate. It's got to have fallen further. So it's definitely going to be d. All right. Object of mass m is sliding down a ramp at constant speed. During the motion, it travels the distance x along the ramp and falls to a vertical distance h. Coefficient of dynamic friction between the ramp and the object is mu. What's the total energy transferred into thermal energy when the object travels a distance x? All right, so we just basically need to say, it says here it's traveling at constant speed. So that means that all of the energy from the change in height is going to be converted into heat because it's thermal energy here, we've got friction on our slope. So as it slides down here, because it's going at constant speed, there's no acceleration, there's no increase in kinetic energy. So all the energy from the change in height is going to go into heat.
Okay, so therefore we will work out the total energy transferred into thermal energy. So it's just going to be the change in the potential energy. So it's just going to be MGH. So that would be A.